If you don't learn these six essential piano concepts, you're gonna add years of frustration to your learning time, or even worse, fail piano for good. Habit number six is the one almost all adult beginners get wrong without even realizing it. But the top 2% of students are mastering all six right from the start, using a clever strategy to easily learn multiple songs per week. I'm not kidding, these guys are doing things in two months that I couldn't do until my third year of playing. I'm still a little bit mad about it. But one final warning, these won't work unless you learn every single step in order. All right, let's get started. All right, so this first concept is gonna surprise you because once you have this framework learned, you'll never look at music the same way again. Now to explain this, I want you to think back to learning to read. Now when little kids read, they sound out every single letter individually. S, E, S, P, A, T. And it takes forever to read a book. Now think about how you read. Right? Instead, you see groups of letters and recognize the entire word at once. And that way you can read a hundred times faster. See spot run, easy. Now, music is the exact same way. Nine out of 10 beginners see these notes and are reading like a kindergartner, each note separately. Instead, we can recognize that this entire group of notes is actually just a C major chord. And we can simplify each of these groups into a different chord shape. Now this changed everything for me because I realized most popular songs only have four chords that repeat over and over and over. For example, this chord progression is a very popular song. You've surely heard it before. Let me know, do you recognize it? If you don't, I'll give you the answer later on in this video. All right, now time for a test because if you're smart, you might be thinking, okay, Zach, I got the chords, but what about the melody notes? Well, guess what? This is even easier if you can pass the famous one, two, three piano test. And if you can pass this test, that means you have the potential to be in the top 2% of beginners and unlock that ability to learn songs in just a few minutes. All right, so for the test, we're only gonna use the notes C, D, and E. But to make it even simpler, we're just gonna call them one, two, and three. And I'm gonna have you try to figure out the pattern that I'm going to play without looking. So for example, if I play, the correct answer would be one, two, three, two, three. All right, so let's cover up my hand and try to figure out these six notes, ready? All right, one more time for you. All right, so the correct answer was one, two, three, one, two, three. Now guess what? If you got that right, you actually learned something that you didn't expect because that pattern is the same one used in the popular song, You Found Me by the Fray. Check this out. Lost and insecure. Ready? You found me. One, two, three. So you just took the very first step to learning a song by ear. Now, of course, those are just the first three notes, but there's a well-tested system of exercises to master these first three notes and then gradually expand to five, then to seven, and so on until you've mastered the entire keyboard. It's surprisingly a lot easier than most people think. By the way, let's see if you caught this. Did you notice something interesting about the song we just played? You guessed it, it's the same song we learned the chords for in step one. So guess what? You just learned the chords of the song and you just started to learn the melody by ear. So guess what? When you learn the chords of a song and you can learn the melody by ear, you can literally magically learn these songs in minutes. And this is what really blows people's minds and they think you're some kind of piano wizard or something. But the big problem is even if you learn a song, there's a big mistake 98% of beginners make. You probably do this all the time and don't even realize it. And it makes you sound like an amateur even if you're playing the correct notes. So take a look at your hand for a second. What do you notice about your fingers that's interesting? Well, these three fingers are pretty close in size, but the pinky is way shorter. And because of that, most beginners have this kind of pathetic, frail sound come out every time they play, play their pinky. I call it weak pinky syndrome. It makes you sound amateur and people are gonna laugh at you behind your back instead of being amazed, right? Now, most beginners have this misconception that they need to do exercises to strengthen their pinky, but that's actually wrong. It's not a strength issue, it's actually a technique issue. And you can fix it in about two minutes using something called the over under technique. So check this out. If I play this with a normal hand position, the only way to reach the note with my pinky is to straighten it 
which makes it very weak. If I curve my pinky, I'm gonna miss the keyboard altogether. So look at these two examples and see if you can notice specifically what's the different motion between example one and example two. So in example two, you'll notice when I play toward my pinky, I rotate my wrist down and out so you can get this nice strong curve shape in your pinky and still hit the note. And you want to build this habit in every single time that you play with your pinky because the longer you drill in bad habits, they can become an absolute nightmare to fix in the future. By the way, there's a bunch of other simple little hand motions that can instantly fix different aspects of your playing and more about that in other videos on my channel. But the truth is none of this is gonna work unless you're following concept number four, the triple F rule. Now this was popularized by the famous composer Franz Liszt back in the 1800s and he insisted all his students use it. Now based on scientific research it takes four times as long to correct a bad habit than to learn a good habit right from the get-go. So let me ask you a question. Why do you think it takes beginners so long to learn songs on piano? Well most people say well that's obvious it takes a long time to learn all of the notes but in reality it actually doesn't take that long to learn all the notes if you're learning them with 100% accuracy right from the get-go. Get go. Because the hidden truth is most beginners waste most of their time drilling in wrong notes, then unlearning the wrong notes and correcting them later on. But it's an easy fix if you follow the three S's and the third S is typically the one that I see most beginners forget. All right, so the first S is always practice slow enough to get perfect accuracy right from the get-go. The second S is for hand separate. Always practice your left hand, then your right hand, get them both on autopilot, and then practice hands together. And by the way, let me know in the comments if you can figure out why it's important to practice the left hand before the right hand. And the third S is for small sections. When I practice, oftentimes I'll take sessions as little as two to four notes, especially if it's the really hard part of the song. That way I can drill in that very small section with 100% accuracy and then gradually expand to bigger and bigger sections without having to relearn all those notes that I drilled in incorrectly. Now this next step is the Swiss Army Knife step and it's very powerful but kind of sneaky trick that beginners are using to learn songs way faster. Oddly enough, you actually learn less to learn more. So here's what I mean. Have you ever owned one of these Swiss Army Knives? This thing has 17 gadgets on it. But how many do you actually use on a regular basis? I mean, I've literally used two in my life, the scissors and the bottle opener. Ironically, I've never actually even used the knife on the Swiss Army knife. So similarly, look at this huge overwhelming list of chords. Imagine trying to memorize all of these, but guess what? 80% of these chords you will never use in your life. And on the flip side, 20% of these chords are used all the time in almost every single popular song imaginable. So my nerd brain went ahead, did an analysis of 563 songs and found out there are six what I call gold chords that are used significantly more than the rest. In fact, if you just master these six gold chords, you're going to be able to play 84% of popular songs. I'm not even kidding you. And then if you want, you can move down to the silver chords, which are used a bit less, and then the bronze chords, which are used even less. And by the way, let me ask you this. Have you ever been to one of those dueling piano bars where they can seemingly magically play any song the audience requests? Well, guess what? They're doing this using the gold chords we just learned and cleverly combining it with the most powerful concept of all that we're gonna talk about in step number six. But first, to get the gold chords cheat sheet, click the link up here in the description, enter your name and email, hit submit, and you can get your cheat sheet here. All right, step six is the most powerful concept of them all, and it combines everything we learn into a step-by-step -step process to easily learn hundreds of songs in record speed. See, the big secret most people don't realize is tons of popular songs from the radio share the exact same chords in the exact same order, and you can literally copy and paste from one song to another. And there's one progression in particular, it's called the legendary four chord progression. This was popularized by Ed Sheeran, Elton John, Axis of Awesome, and more, and you can literally learn hundreds of songs with one simple chord progression. Click here to learn that now. By the way, this lesson is more of a step-by-step -step practical lesson that'll get you actually up and running learning songs that you can use to impress your friends and family. Click here to watch that now.